Hello everyone, this is Dr. Shi Jun Wang. Um, first of all, uh, I want to apologize for not <laughs> updating for so long. The last video I uploaded was in May, so it's almost three months past. So what I did during these three months is, first of all, we did move about uh, almost 2,000 miles. Uh, from from uh, Utah to Central Texas um, to prepare for my new job starting uh, in a couple of weeks uh, actually um, and also uh, I performed in some festivals and taught in some festivals um, so I was traveling quite a lot uh, I guess for the first time summer travels in <laughs> three three years um, so the last video I uploaded uh, on the uh, Schubert, I, I did mention that I will do the Brahms uh, Intermezzo Opus 118 next. Um, and Brahms as a composer has been my all-time favorite. Not just the piano music, but also symphonies, chamber music. I think I've performed almost most of the chamber works, yeah, the clarinet sonatas, the piano trios, piano quartet, uh, the violin sonatas, I know them all, the, the, the cello sonatas, so anything with, with Brahms, I think the, the, my favorite actually among all of his master works are the chamber works. Um, and also, also as, as a, a composer, as a person, I, I'm most interested in, in reading anything about about him. Um, we, we all know that Brahms is late romantic composer. Yeah? Um, Chopin, Liszt, uh, Schumann, everybody was born in the early 1810, right? Some 1809, some 1811, but Chopin was 1810. And Brahms was born in 1833, so almost 23 years later. And in those days, 23 years meaning that's another generation. Uh, he's another generation younger than the old folks, Chopin, Liszt, Schumann. Um, but then, from a perspective of musicologists, they would think Brahms is the conservative, right? Because the new German school was formed by Liszt, Wagner. They were seeking new paths. They were, instead of writing chamber music, which is a inherited from uh, the classical period, uh, class, of course, the Allegro Sonata form, it's, it's an old form, but they wanted to abandon all that. They also abandoned the pure music or absolute music, which Mozart was writing. Like you do not know what is it talking about, but then they were interested in drawing connection with literature, with titles, with with uh, poems. Um, so it's a new past. But then for Brahms, um, he was a conservative. He plays or composes chamber music sonatas right and most of the things he he composes has a pre-existed form and and of course he wrote leader but he doesn't associate any literature or any poems with with his uh, instrumental works um so in the 1950s or maybe 60s um arnold schoenberg yeah, somebody as progressive as possible who not only geared the history of music into a different, he abandoned tonality, right? He's revolutionary. Um, he published a paper calling Brahms the progressive, right? And I, I don't know how much of a shock it is for, for you guys to listen, but that's almost like to call Joe Biden a conservative or were Barack Obama a conservative right it's it's the opposite of everything uh, we know and and why did he mention that he did in that quite short article mentioned about his leader some of the chamber works and how he said 
he was inspired by the way Brahms constructed the pieces by its motivic development. Um, and so if we look at this Opus 118, there are six very, very different pieces. Different mood, different tempo, different everything. Um, but then, and, and this is something I discovered, I, I probably talked with some people that <laughs> I trust and, and, and I think can appreciate, but um, I discovered that everything in this set is developed from three notes or two intervals, a minor second and a major second. So the first is a dropping major second and then a minor second. The second if, if we really disregard the order, this three notes has a major second and then a minor second. Major second and then a minor second. Minor second with a major second, even this. second minor second and then the last one of course it starts with a solo voice only three notes minor second major second so they look very different but they have the same DNA right but if you do some tests oh they're having the same parents the the three notes um, and even in a grander form Right? When I discovered this, I had shimmerance with me, like how, how carefully, how well constructed Brahms <laughs> constructed or put these together. If we talk, think about the key relationship, the first one started on A minor, A minor, and then it ends with a pico di third. third one to G minor. What's the relation between A minor, A major, G minor? If you pick the third note in the tonic chord, the three, right, which is the most important, right, that determines if it's major or minor. And the A minor has C, A major has C sharp, and then G minor has B flat. Minor second plus a major second. From four, five to six, exactly the same treatment. Yeah, we start with F minor, right? As a matter of fact, the first note is A flat. Okay, and then with a F major ending that transitions to the next one. major and then according to the pattern we should have E minor and here we have E flat minor uh, E flat minor again even the grander form indicates the motive right of course in two pairs because there are only three notes and we have six pieces so he did it twice but how wonderful is that <laughs> Mathematically speaking, I'm sure any mathematician would be very excited. This, this is probably as good as how Bach constructed everything. Um, and then on top of this, with such personal feelings among each of these. Um, Brahms once said about the late pieces, um, he, he put a quote at the end of the published version, he said, life not loved is not lived. 
right? So it really, it's it's very touching. It's a very touching concept. So why did he write these wonderful pieces so late in his life? Um, it's fortunate that he met Schumann when he was twenty years old. It's also unfortunate for him to carry the burden Schumann put upon him, right? Basically, I mean that's really the last. A couple of good ones before Schumann went insane, um, but Schumann said this is the new path. He even called him John the Baptist, right? We all know John ba the Baptist carried the burden of Jesus, and and for Schumann, the Jesus was was Beethoven. So he basically saying the hope of German culture of music is upon this young guy, and. He has to produce everything like John the Baptist. He has to not disappoint everyone. And he once actually very bitterly wrote into his diary. He said, "I envy Mozart because Mozart can go to a bar, a tavern, and then write bar music, and then next day go to an opera house and write opera music, right?" But he said, "I cannot. I, I." I carry too big of a burden. I can only write symphonies, chamber music, or anything with grander form, piano sonatas, right? I mean, it's it's very un un unusual for a composer to begin the first five opus with sonatas, and then these character pieces towards the very end of his life, right? Chopin, for instance, the first piece he did was like two pages. Marzuka, you know, same length as this one, and then of course he had concertos and sonatas. And any any romantic composer would not start with big sonata. So here we go. Towards the end of his life, I, I'm sure he have he had enough, and he think uh, he thinks that oh, I'm done composing. I I I uh, I did my share. I I've contributed, and these are for myself. These are not for the future of, of music. That's why these are so dear to us too, because they are the true feeling of, of Brahms. Okay, so um, we can do a little bit of, of the first piece, and the first piece I think functions as a prelude of, of a big set, yeah, that lasts for over 20 minutes. Um, and as we talked about the minor second, major second uh, DNA, motive but the opening Brahms also placed the E in a very high importance why is that because he wrote a diminutive and the one once on upon one single note and, and how can one single note do diminutive and well if you don't do anything at diminutive that's the diminuendo so he must meant this is something you should bring it out. The second time. And why is that important? Right? The three noted motive. Why the fourth note here uh, in the first piece? Because 11 measures later. Is the exact mirror image. Of the same, it's almost like Bach, right? Everyone, everything is from Bach. Um, the mirror image subject. Okay, so here we have the four notes, um, and this is really deceivingly difficult. It doesn't seem difficult um, at first glance, but um, the left hand is very easy to miss notes. And this is why, because usually we find the hand position, and, and the hand position we usually have thumb or second finger, but in this case, left hand only has fourth finger. To start. And that fourth finger is really the weakest among all fingers, right? So we have to really pay deep in, uh, very, very big attention to the left hand fourth finger. <laughs> Brahms is not only interested in bringing the top, everything downstairs uh, has the same motive. Yeah, for, for, for instance, major 9. That's the same. And then 
at the same time, of course, in a different timing. Yeah, this is one in the tenor, one in the alto. And these are, I think, obvious if, if you study carefully. Um, because by looking at the score, these are repeated notes and the notes that sticks out yeah, are these notes. And uh, in most cases, Brahms even put a separate stamp, for instance, here. Uh, yeah, instead of eighth note, those has a quarter note stamp on it. But some of these motivic indications are hidden. Like Brahms, many things are hidden. Many letters were destroyed. Uh, here we have three mini phrases. But the beginning of each phrase, A, B, C. Right? Of course, we don't hear it because it's from different register, different octaves on the keyboard. But then the beginning, and of course the same treatment happened again at the very end. E, F, G. The last breath. transition he is preparing us for the lyrical second uh, from the set I really missed doing this and I hope I can keep my promise and start uh, uploading every week um, well we will have a long journey ahead of us there are six pieces and I think some of them are uh, too complicated I have to spend multiple sessions see you next week for more Bronx